everybody. Welcome to a special edition of Lunch with a Trojan. I guess it's Dinner with a Trojan, but it's our little one-on-one tunnel vision show we do with people from the USC football community, and we have someone that's new to the USC football community. Uh, Jake, thanks for coming on the show. Jake Brown, follow him on Twitter, at Jake Brown, B-R-O. W N N underscore. We got to work on your Twitter handle, maybe a little bit. But Jake, yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah, on. I got some work to do with that, huh? <laughs> How you doing, man? Good, man. How are you? Do- doing all right. So I appreciate you coming on. Uh, Jake's f- figuring out. So you're in Santa Monica? Uh, yeah, actually, I just got back from Santa Monica. I was looking at some places uh, in that area, and then I hit I hit traffic kind of around that time coming back towards campus area. So uh, I- I'm learning LA traffic and uh, planning. Uh, around it the the hard way. <laughs> yeah, it's a little different. So you get used to uh, you'll get used to Los Angeles a little bit. So we got you in your car. That's all right. You know, it's funny. The okay. so we've had like high school recruits on who had the worst situation for their live video. The video guy that USC just hired. So that's that's perfect. <laughs> you know. Hey, well, I was I was on the beach earlier, man. But, <laughs> but I thought I thought to myself, well, my phone's about to die. I better get to my car just in case. Oh, cool. Uh, so. So next time, maybe we'll, uh, we'll we'll be reporting live from from uh, you know the beach, but we'll, we could do, we'll... yeah, we could do the beach. Hopefully in studio at some point. Uh, that would yeah, be nice. that would be great. Where's the where do you guys? I guess you kind of just work uh, mainly, you know, where where you're based out of your offices or what? Yeah, so we're in uh, this studio is in Redondo Beach where we do our shows, we do our podcasts and everything here, and I live in Hermosa, so just down the freeway from you are. So you, when did you get to Los Angeles? uh whew, man uh i guess friday yeah friday I oh got wow here. so yeah yeah i'm kind of i'm kind of getting to know the city a little bit um it's nice well i say it's nice this one positive of this whole you know coronavirus and and everything everything's kind of shut down so you know i'm i'm kind of able to to get my feet wet and kind of you know travel a little bit more and visit a little bit more like i said that the traffic today um coming back was kind of my first taste of of any traffic really and and but other than that man it's been i've been able to explore the city and just kind of get to know the area uh it's been awesome so uh, if, if you don't know so jacob uh, was hired uh he's the director of football video production so it's a new department you and will stout coming over from uh, lsu where if you saw some of their videos i mean four three million four million views like they were really just crushing it there uh for lsu's national championship season and joe burrow's Heisman. So, uh, yeah. So, but you guys aren't officially starting until June 1st. Yes. Yeah. June 1st is when, is when we hit the ground running and, uh, I can't wait. I think Will's going to get here this weekend, um, Saturday maybe. Um, but he's going to, he's getting here really quick. Um, you know, we're, 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 we're really ready. We can't wait. The, uh, yeah, I'll put a picture of you guys up there from your, the, the LSU uh days yeah so there's a that, that's we don't have a whole lot of pictures of you so we'll got you know we uh you know we're not picture guys we're really not it's it's just kind of and honestly taking those pictures like we're, we're just we're not we just like to show up and, and be behind the camera instead of in front of it yeah if you actually uh apparently you're friends with uh, we have a mutual friend she works at usc katie ryan so uh she told yeah. me that yeah that you guys had a so that's cool so you at least you know somewhat in the athletic department already yeah, yeah, no, I knew Katie. Uh, I met her a couple of years ago, I think, at the NFL Combine. I uh, met her then, and um, just just really good person. And I uh, kind of got to see then, you know, working at a place like SC, you know, you just uh, you kind of have a different different mentality, and, and, and you know, just seemed like a very very happy person. <laughs> yeah, oh, she definitely is. Um, so, one of the thing, how did you get started uh, in this in video production? I mean, I, I think you were working like as your at your church as a kid? Like, is this something you've always been interested in? How did this kind of yeah. get started? Yeah, something growing up, it, it was something that me and my brother kind of connected with. Um, you know, he was really good at technology and, and he kind of showed me showed me some stuff. We always made home videos growing up, me and my best friends, all that. And then, you know, once I kind of started growing up, you see other ways that it can, you know, impact people, right? So with church or with high school, with athletics, with, you know, sports going on to college, um, you know, seeing just how many different avenues were interested in video, it affects everything. Um, and just being able to communicate your message with the world in an effective way, um, I kind of got to see the growth of it. You know, then I guess coming up as a young guy, I, I really had no idea as I'm going through college, you know, like I told you, I used to, I, I was originally an electrical engineer. I'm like, this is a good career field. I can definitely see myself 
you know, going up a, a ladder here, but then it's like, man, I really love doing video. This is a lot of fun. Like, how can I turn this hobby into a career? And it really is a career. It's an industry now. And um, it's it's been really exciting to see. There's there's a, there's obviously grown pains with with any industry, um, but it's it's really awesome to see just how how it's uh, how it's grown. That's funny. That I didn't realize this, but I'm an electrical engineer also. So I that's uh, I have a USC undergrad and my master's in electrical engineering. I worked as an wow. engineer. Yeah. Wow, so okay. So I, I know I know who to call then. Okay. Yeah. Th that's how I. Th I mean, basically, that's how I started the website. But this was in the '90s. I wrote all the code to create uscfootball.com myself. So I coded the whole site myself. And then early on in the early digital video days, so before your time, uh, I mean, the, the cool thing we had was like Firewire, where you could capture yep. video from a tape at the at a one to one ratio. Before your digital video, like if you had an hour of video, it might take you like four hours to yep. to download it Firewire. to your computer. And Firewire <laughs> made up for one to one. Now right. you can do things a lot better. But being an engineer, I feel like I could just pick up. So I didn't know anything about video production. Like now we do all this stuff. It was just, you feel like you could pick up software. You could pick up, you know, there was a lot of kind of engineering yeah. problems you had to solve. Right, right. And that's what it is. I mean, this, the technology evolves so much, you know, I know a lot of older video guys, you know, it's hard to stay on the carousel, right? It's constantly going around. It's constantly changing and evolving. And how do you stay on top of that? And, you know, the tools that we have now to do our jobs, um, it's crazy. The stories that we can tell and just how, I mean, if you have the equipment and then, you know, the ideas and the creativity, that's great. But then you got to figure out how to build that relationship with the players. Right. And, and, and let them know, Hey, I'm here for you. I'm here to do a great job with you. Let, let's, let's, you know, let's crush this thing. Um, and, and just kind of giving them that whole experience of, of making it easy for them to tell their story. Right. Like we're just kind of the, I guess the tools to, to, to make it happen. Cause you know, the way I see it, every single person on our team uh, has a story, right. Like we're all storytellers and, you know, I see us, our department, you know, not just me, but Will and, and Alex and everybody um, really as, as a means for, for our guys um, to be able to tell those stories. And, you know, my job is just making sure they know how to do it and, and making it as easy as possible for them. So now you were working at LSU. Now, Will, uh, Will Stout, so who came over with you, he was actually a student. He was still a student working, uh, doing this stuff. So was that kind of hard to convince him to like actually leave school and come out to USC? Um, you know, I knew he always wanted to be in LA. Um, oh, well that and, helps. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. So that, that helped out a lot, but I think too, just like working with him, me and him have a really good professional relationship where it's like, you know, you understand what the other one can do well and you just let them do their thing. And, um, you know, we know when to pick up, pick up the slack when we need to. And we work really well together, I think. Um, so for us, it just made sense from that standpoint. Um, and just, it made sense from a ton of standpoints, but yeah. I mean, ultimately like we were just so, so happy to just be a part of a, a family at SC where, man, we really feel like we can tell a lot of great stories here. Yeah. Um, the great stories. I want to put up this video. I, I put this up during one of the last shows I did with, uh, 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 Dante Williams, he loved this video. So this was a video you uh, you guys produced this, right? I guess before you were like officially started, or you know, I, 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 oh wait, or we can't talk about it. That's fine. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I, I just, it's easy to find. I'll say this: I, I, it's easy to find the clips you need to to tell stories, right? And everything's out there. And, um, you know, for me, it was just like let's let's start telling the story. Let's start getting people excited. Um, yeah. And, it's, it's simple to me. Um, and like I said, yeah, when June 1st hits, we're going to keep rolling even more and more. I can't wait. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to put a couple of the LSU ones you guys did up too, but I'll put that one up for now. But the, a lot of this is, has to do with recruiting, right? And so and it's weird. Like we've talked to people, um, people on social media when, you know, we, the, the news of you guys broke, we broke it on the site. I think Bruce Feldman tweeted about it and stuff too. Um, you know, it's there were some people that are just like pushing back, like, why are you making a big deal about this? They're like, well, do you see the videos are done? Like, it's just, I think some of the old school people, and I, you know, I'm being an older guy. This wasn't, you know, this isn't exactly my cup of tea. I know what's going on, but it seems like it really resonates with young people, right? I mean, this is something like the, this is how you have to kind of do things going forward. Yeah, I mean, like I said, we're just the tools to to communicate a message, right? To tell to tell our guys' stories, and I mean, you know. 
a lot of people don't understand. Uh, I mean, they see a well-produced video and they think so much and, and a lot does go into it. Don't get me wrong, but you know, if, if I can produce something in a day that gets that, Im that impacts a program like that, um, you know, it's my value is going to be pretty easy yeah. to prove, you know, that's worth your time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you can either embrace it or, or not, I, you know, it's, it's, to me, it, it's exciting to be a part of a program where, I mean, the leadership top down, everybody is embracing everything right now, right? There's momentum. That's great. But, you know, we got to, like, for me, it's like, man, I, I just, I can't wait to start telling some of these guys stories and just giving them an outlet for, for them to express themselves and for the, you know, fans and obviously everybody to, to get to know the program. Is it targeted towards, I mean, I guess it depends what you're talking about. If you're talking about like Joe Burrow's Heisman, maybe I'll put that one, uh, up there so if you're talking about something like oh, that this is well this is well he, he killed it on this one. Oh, this is yeah so uh is this oh maybe this is to put the wrong Closer, one up there I this is the LSU. it's still a good one too you can play this oh, okay yeah <laughs> uh but is this so this isn't like a recruiting video where a recruit you're like Closer, you're targeting the whatever the generation they call it now um, yeah you know 17 year olds there's older alumni Do they, i mean is it something I where you're trying to target them as well yeah. as the young yeah. people or I mean, there's there's a million ways to do it. Dark days. Um, you know, at the end of the day, if you make it, if you told put the good put the players first. Wondering. Uh, you know, I, I always have been of the mindset that everything else will fall behind that, right? That everything else having will grow if you put everything. the players first. And, and how how are we doing that? Still falling um, short. So for me, yeah, you worry about what kind of transforms received by everyone. You hope everyone me. loves it, right? But at the same Made time, who I am. your message has to be Made me promise your brand has to be what the, the it never has back. to be the players, right? It has to be to them. Never. It can't just be for you know some. We can make a million hype videos, and I that's great. But I mean, it really has to tell that's a story, right? It really has to resonate. I remember with every failure. The guy. And that's why because I because it resonates with them it'll resonate with I remember fans every defeat and the alumni and everything and it just kind of builds that's why air, I, so I think I think if you start with that mindset I remember uh, rock bottom. now this one that we're playing right now is that's narrated by uh, uh Dwayne the Rock Johnson obviously there's a lot of celebrity ties uh at USC how important so is that to this process where you're trying to get you know people like big name people that the, the fans sure. out there would know Sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's, I mean, it, it's definitely a good idea. It's important when it's appropriate. Um, you know, I, I think if we can find ways to tell stories that we find big names, celebrities, whoever it is, uh, and we figure out creative ways to incorporate them. Yeah, it totally makes sense. You don't want to just throw somebody in there because you know, you can, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's something that you want to do it when it, when it makes sense. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, to get these big names to work with you or to want to, to really pay attention to what we're doing, um, you got to let them know that you're going to use it the best possible way. And it, do you have any early names on your celebrity list or is that like a top secret thing? Uh, you know, I don't want to say it's a top secret thing, but <laughs> But at, at the end of the day, I want to work with the people who want to work with us. So it's um, it, it's a it's a combination, I guess. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, there's I mean, there's a bunch of uh, big ones out there you can get. I mean, between former players, you got lots of Heisman winners. You got you yeah, know, like the Will yeah. Ferrells of the world. You know, he's done some stuff with USC recently. So yeah. <laughs> now that that would be that would be incredible. But I mean, yeah, that kind of stuff. Whenever it's appropriate and we can make it happen, it, I love it. I love yeah. it. The, uh, so, like, that was narrated by uh, The Rock. Is that stuff that you guys write up as far as what, you know, we want you saying this? Or is that, like, how does that, is that like a yeah. collaboration? And that, and a lot, or how we did it at LSU, we had an on-staff writer. His name was uh, Cody Worsham. He, he's incredible. He really um, spent a long time covering LSU and just knows the program and the brand and everything inside out. So I don't know where he, he pulls some of these scripts from, but man, he, he's really good at that. Um, so having somebody on staff, like I said, having somebody like that, that can write a serious script that just resonates and it works. And then like, then you get, it's that much easier to get it voiced. Right. So like when you have all these pieces working together, um, it's really not that difficult. And um, you can make something awesome. The uh, 
obviously LSU, I mean, pretty good year, 15 and 0 Heisman Trophy, you know, national championship. How different is it to create hype videos when the team is just crushing everyone as opposed to maybe a team that's struggling a little bit? Man, uh, <laughs> I would love to talk about all the videos I've made for teams that never saw the light of day. No one cared because just because the teams weren't losing or the teams weren't winning, excuse me. Um, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of our work will be valued by how much our teams are winning or losing. And that's great. Yeah. That's great. Um, you know, I, for me, I know my process and I know what works and regardless, regardless of anything else, you know, it, it's, it, whatever tells the story of our team, we can tell that in a million ways. It doesn't have to be a hype video or, you know, it doesn't have to be necessarily anything. We can make it whatever yeah. we want it to be. So, you know, whenever it's appropriate, we'll, we'll do that kind of stuff. The, uh, yeah, when you're talking about creating these for different teams, uh, I mean, social media is a big part of it. LSU's got a pretty big social media presence, significantly bigger than what USC has now. Is that something you have to incorporate? And is there any kind of maybe low hanging fruit that you've seen to try to, you know, increase that at USC? Um, I mean, I guess, you know, as far as the follower following number goes to increase it, like that's always, that's definitely always a goal. Um, that will come regardless. The only thing I'm worried about is making cool content, you know, yeah. that, that, that gives them a reason to show up. I, you know, I don't care if we have, 3 million followers or 30,000, right? Like as long as our 30,000 know who we are and love USC more than anything else. Cool. Yeah. You know, and, and then the followers will come on top of that. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's a process. Yeah. I mean, that's our, our industry too. Like we are, we're content creators and you have to create compelling content and you, you yeah. grow your audience by doing that. Sometimes it's slow, but uh, yeah, it'd be interesting. <laughs> well, to and see. You got to find ways to be creative regardless, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's easy when you, to to have a hype video that everybody wants to see every week because we're we're winning games every week, you know. Yeah. Um, that it's appropriate then, right? Um, so, you know, like I said, you just you can't look at yourself as doing one thing. You just have to look at the whole. This is our team. How can we tell the story the best? Yeah, that that's an interesting point because you're coming into a fan base that you know not exactly been happy with the way things have been going, and sometimes you would see this video like i think they'd produce some pretty cool stuff but sometimes it would fall on deaf ears because they're like not really happy with the program it's like is that something you have to kind of take into consideration where you're like okay we know the fans are upset so we're not going to do this we'll do this instead something like that uh, <laughs> or is that like a slipper is that is that that's tough to navigate i would think nah i, I don't really i mean uh you always want to be cognizant of, of what the fans think obviously as you're telling a message to them all the time but for me I don't, I, it's tough for me to say I, I, I make content decisions based on if the fans are going to like it, I guess, if that's what, if that makes sense. Um, I mean, you have to be cognizant of that kind of stuff to make the right decision. But at the end of the day, you have to be very confident in what you're doing. And if you're worried about what everybody thinks, you know, how can you be confident? Yeah. Uh, what's the plan to integrate? maybe uh, some of the, the staff or, you know, potential like interns or whatever from the USC film school? Um, I mean, whatever we can do with that, we will. I think ultimately at the end of the day, like I just love that we have such a creative community here in LA and, and USC and, and that film school in general. I've already had a, a couple of film school people reach out to me, you know, alumni and stuff, and they're excited about it. And they're, it's very, they're very positive. So that tells me, you know, Hey, the, the desire is there, you know, obviously like, like, you know, we should definitely tap into this. Um, and then from there, it's just creating the value. Like we got to make sure every kid that we're working with knows that what they're doing is important, but at the same time, they're getting something out of it as well. So, you know, there's value for both sides. And I think when you really do teach them great tools to make, you know, to do great work, um, you know, everybody wins. So it's, it should be pretty simple. I'll put up the uh, Joe Burrow one now too, but this this comes up because I want to talk about um, uh, so name, star. image, and likeness, and the NCAA potentially allowing 
compensation. It looks like that's going to happen if you had a guy like Joe Burrow. Make a few plays. The kind of things he could do, especially just with like a video like that. Like, how much has that been talked about as far as like future? Because there's no, we don't know what the rules would be or anything. But that that seems like something you guys would could be incorporated in. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of legislation that has to happen for that kind of stuff. Right? Figure out what we're going to do. Um, Every the biggest thing effort. is you just have to be ready. You just have to be talking to the people in the industry that are on top himself. of this that, that right you know, can story. have these real conversations. So he when this stuff own. hits, you already, you already have a plan. And once you see him, um, you know, that's, you that's the conversation we're having now, like, with USC, with, with all this stuff, how, how it's going to be down from Just because, you know, a place like LA, there's so much, so much that our players can do. But we have to make sure that we prepare them to do that the right way. There's definitely going to be a process with this. Um, they're not going to just be able to, to go out and, and, and make a, you know, get a check from whoever. Um, you know, you, I'm, I've got a feeling that you're going to have to, you know, really keep up with everything. Our compliance guys are going to yeah. have a have a lot of fun, uh, you know. And, but the better that we can be organized and prepared for that, um, you know, like I said, it's a, it's a it's a part of recruiting because I mean it's it's a serious thing, right? Like. There's so many guys that come through a program that don't necessarily understand, hey, if you take advantage of your brand and, and what you have here, it'll help you out so much later in life, right? No matter what you do. But what if you could take that and figure out a way where they could benefit from it more now and kind of get get something from it from it now? I mean, I think that's we would almost be cheating them out of what they're worth if we if we're not doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, uh, so we're allowed to shoot um, highlights for, like for our, we're our website. So we're in the media. We're allowed to shoot uh, field level highlights. And we usually put out like a three minute highlight package. It's pretty simple. It's not like, you know, there's not a lot of production going into it, something like that. It shows right. the, the highlights of the game. What's the difference between, you know, just putting up like a highlight package of whatever minutes long and creating this like kind of hype video from a game where sure. you're telling a story, I guess more. Yeah. Than. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's almost like, it's almost like <laughs> cooking, you know, you gotta, you gotta go out and get your ingredients. So like, you know, game day, we got to go out and shoot everything better than anybody else. We got to shoot harder, you know, smarter, whatever. Um, so in the moment we have to be really good, you know, shooting wise and, and planning and all that stuff. Um, and then just figuring out, you know, everything on top of that um uh, there's there's a lot that goes into it <laughs> yeah how, how many shooters do you usually have at a game like that for your for you guys man however many we can have um <laughs> you, you, you know it's 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 nice if you have if you have like three shooters that are working together really well that's way more valuable than you know more you know you'd rather have a fewer number of guys working together well to make sure you capture everything yeah um and, and just owning the the game better than anybody else but um you know as long as everything's getting covered it, it doesn't really matter um the more the merrier and as long as you just have a way to organize all that and ingest it and you know keep it keep it easy to to get to later yeah, because yeah, if you could have ten shooters and five of them are just shooting stuff you don't need, that's just wasting your time later on. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, that's that's making everybody's life miserable. <laughs> yeah. Um, was there a moment early on, maybe in that LSU season, that you just kind of knew these videos were going to be absolutely huge? No, I don't. I, I I mean, like I said, we do what we do, and then when the winds come, things blow up, right? And it's 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 awesome, but you kind of you know that's that's my job right that's why, that's why i'm here um you know so it's nice when everybody likes it and stuff but at the same time like you know i, I mean i had a, i had a couple people wanting to interview me over that video and i'm like are you kidding me like that's just one video <laughs> you know it's to, to me it's like we got so much more to do <laughs> yeah all right um was there any ideas like uh kicked around maybe like a hard knocks kind of series for like a fall camp thing if that if that hopefully cross their fingers if something like that happens um you know you're doing a good job of putting the idea in there huh? <laughs> <laughs> just saying those would be interesting I, you know. yeah no that that would be i mean ultimately at the end of the day it's just all about what we can create if that's yeah. something we can create if that if that's a story we can tell with the access that we and the tools that we have which i mean yeah but you know at the same time there may be other things that we need to worry about so 
yeah, I would love to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but again, we just got to make sure we're taking care of everything we got to. The uh, so the the take back the West video. We talked to Dante Williams about it. That you know that was sort of his kind of mantra coming in. We're recruiting. USC's been doing well with recruiting. Did you get like what was the kind of feedback you got off that when you you're, that that first one? Um, you know, everybody loved it. Um, okay. which is a good feeling. Um, yeah, yeah. But but the thing that I did like was maybe Trey and someone else. Who was it? Trey and someone else had some suggestions, like super light suggestions. And I have notes. <laughs> no, no, no. But that but that's the thing. That's the thing though. It's like we've had such a good relationship so far where I can make a really cool video, then they can say, Well, it's awesome, but man, what if it could be this? And I'm like, You're exactly right. Like, what if it could be that? Like, let's do it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, I mean, I, I, I'm always going to be happy for feedback, but I'm always going to be, you know, excited to figure out how we could, you know, do it better. The, uh, when you do something like that, uh, and, and Dante Williams was like, he was over the moon. He just was so excited. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a great recruiter, but it's sort of like, you know, he, I, I think I described it one show, like he's like a recruiting ninja, but then you just gave him like a bazooka too. So he's like, he could, you know, there's this extra weapon in his cash that you might normally not have. Um, right. How do you share it with the coaches for the first time? And like, do you remember their first reactions to seeing it? Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing is just making sure everybody gets the whole full quality high resolution video and nobody's posting like, you know, low res. Like, oh yeah. yeah. You know, the biggest thing is just making sure the coaches get it clearly. Right. And, um, and then just on top of that, just making sure they understand, Hey, this is my general idea with this message. Like, this is what I was thinking. What do you think? Okay. Um, and, and typically they, it's something they can roll with and go and it's, it's a conversation starter or whatever. Um, you know, it, it's, it's something really good. Has that been a problem? Like we like share like a preview and someone like posted on Instagram or something. You're like, hey, that, <laughs> not, not, like that's a terrible um, version of that. Or, you know, if, if it has been a problem, it hasn't been a problem very long because we won't share nothing with them. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> um, what kind of reaction have you got from uh, the actual player? Have you talked to players at USC? Have they? Yeah, have they seen yeah. Fired I've, talk, up? I've talked to I've talked to a few. Um, you know, there's definitely uh, definitely a ton of guys that are excited, but like I said, there's only so much I can do remotely, right? Like I know we can build that relationship once we get in there, and you know, once we start working, whenever that is. But at the same time, it's like okay, maybe I got to start building these relationships remotely. So I've been doing a lot of research myself, just kind of figuring out, you know, who's coming back and who's, you know, who's got great personalities and, you know, who's got a YouTube and different stuff like that, you know, just trying to get to know them that way. Um, because I, I don't want them to necessarily, I, I want to know as much as I can about them before they even meet me, you know? Yeah. A couple more before you let you go. Uh, I, so Gerard Martinez did a story on you, like we said, when uh, when you guys were first hired. And uh, he quoted you as saying, I've never worked for a program that's as easy to sell as USC is. But at the same time, you have to do more than that. You have to sell the people. You have to sell what we're doing to help them. Um, if, if you want to kind of explain what you're saying there. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, it just kind of goes back to that brand building stuff. I mean, really, it's, you know, the, the culture of our program, everything that's important to us, we have to be very clear about, right? Um, you know, so I, I guess for me, selling the people, you know, I hate to even use the word sell, but like we have to be extremely passionate about what we're doing, you know, and like it doesn't even have to feel like a sell. It's just who we are. Like, you know, this isn't my job. This is the role that I play, right? Um, so, you know, for me, like I'm, I'm very passionate about what I do. I do it for the players. So like, that's myself. That's like, that's who I am. Right. Like that's not something that I have some orchestrated idea and this is how I'm going to present. No, I mean, that's just who I am. So I don't know. I think it's for recruiting, you know, it's, it's easy. It's easy to sell a program when the, the DNA and the culture of it is, is we're all about the players. So I try to do that in everything that we do. And one last thing, uh, People see videos like this, and I think you can inspire people. I mean, this is sort of a, a budding industry. It's just, you know, it's sort of getting started. We're seeing, you know, new new ways to kind of reach out to uh, younger people. Um, you know, yeah. what's your advice to the next generation of, like, college football video producers that, you know, they maybe they're just starting out? Right, right. Um, 
whew, that's tough. Um, <laughs> be, be ready to take a lot of jobs that you won't like, that you won't get paid a lot of money in, um, but just network all you can, make great work all you can. Um, and, and good luck, man. Everybody wants to get in this industry now. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Well, you guys, you guys made it kind of cool, you know? Well, I mean, no, just there's so many kids now that want to be, you know, that want to do creative stuff and they see, you know, athletics is an easy way to do that. And, and it's, it's, it is, it's true. Um, but at the same time, you have to, you have to, you know, figure out what you can bring to a program that nobody else can. So, yeah. you know, a lot of people can do cool videos. What else can you do? Gotcha. All right. Well, Jake Brown, follow him on Twitter at Jake Brown, two N's underscore. Uh, appreciate you. Hope you're settling in yeah. here in LA and uh, figuring out traffic patterns and all that kind of stuff. And good luck when yeah. uh, officially start on June 1st. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. The biggest thing for me now is figuring out who can cut my hair um, and when uh, they yes. open up. But uh, that, that's, that's the next thing that I got to figure out. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Where, in uh, Louisiana, were they open up? Did they have stuff open or was it pretty closed? Uh, it, it was pretty open. Um, there, nobody was cutting hair yet. But yeah, I don't know what I think that's phase three for the California yeah. plan, but we're two now. I don't know. This is all it all. Moves I might together. have to cut my own, whatever. <laughs> Just do it. I got the beard going. You got some beard going, too. That's pretty good. Uh, quarantine yeah. beard looks like. Yeah, well, I mean, give it a few more days. <laughs> yeah, I got so you don't have all this gray. That's where it just kind of but I'm, just get well, lazy. You, you, you can dye that. Come on now. That's true. Yeah, I could. Uh, you yeah, can, you just, can work with that. The whole point of the, the the quarantine beard is to not care. So like, just like hey, whatever happens, happens. But JK, <laughs> best of luck to you. Uh, thanks very much. We're looking forward to seeing uh, what you can do. Yes, thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this uh, lunch with the Trojan and dinner edition. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. <laughs>